Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Solidity Fridays brought to you by Linum Labs. I'm Tamara Ringus and today I'm going to be doing Art Gobblers with a special guest, Ryan Noble. Hi there, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining. How are you doing? Oh, doing good. Uh, I am in utter awe of the new website for this. Um, have you noticed that the eye follows your cursor around? Yes, it's so cool. I did notice that. And I think if you're at the bottom of the... Oh, no. Never mind. It just follows you around. Um, so, yeah. Art Gobblers is a very interesting uh, decentralized art factory for making uh, special NFTs. And it's by the folks at Paradigm and Justin Roland. Roland? Royland, yeah. This dude. Um, yeah, so he's really cool. And he came up with the idea and the illustration of the gobblers. And um, how it works is gobblers gobble art, as you can see here, obviously. So you get a page and then you laminate your page. And then if a gobbler likes it, they munch it and then it goes into their belly. And then you can see the artwork in their belly. You get different types of gobblers, and we'll look at that soon. Um, so yeah, the first thing you do is you laminate your page, and then you can draw um, your art. So I have a special treat for you all. I I drew a, a very artistic thing over here. <laughs> um, we have truly reached the peak. Yeah, we can. Everyone can stop now. I've, I've won. Yep. No, but really, some of the art is amazing. So here's the gallery of recently laminated pages, and I can't believe the quality like especially because over here you see there's like a counter saying like how long uh, how many moves you have left so you only yeah, have 2000 so yeah which is just although crazy. like if i think of it i've seen some crazy stuff done with layering but i mean like this isn't exactly like illustrator or photoshop so mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah like if you go back to the the submissions there um well if you scroll down a bit, there's, a, I mean, like, yeah, PG, can we even censor this stuff? Look, look at these things. I'll just scroll a bit faster. There we go. Censorship. Uh, yeah. Oh, mine was actually Fe better than this one. Sorry to, whoa. 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 But like this horse diary thing, I, I don't know what it's about. Or what's, I, I like, is this dodgy <laughs> or not? I don't know. Um, it's quite great. Um, mm. This one's also quite wonderful. Mm. And then we got like, Hyper abstract and yeah, baby's first deep, deep uh, meaningful photos. Oh, good morning. Look at them. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. So how this all works is it's all funded by something called Goo, um, and this this guy's drinking his Goo and um, ain't no king eat blood eth is is a true legend. Um, this is great. Cool. So um, here's the code, but I thought before we look at the code, we could look at their green paper. Um, which I think is this. Um, it's, yeah, it's just the system overview. So Art Gobblers is a decentralized art factory owned by aliens. As artists make cool art, Gobblers gains cultural relevance, making collectors want art more, incentivizing artists to make cooler art. It's an, also an on-chain game. So, um, yeah, as we mentioned, you laminate your page. There's that horse skull again. So is laminating the creation of a page to then edit or is it the, you make the thing and then mint it or what, what does that actually mean okay one artists will be able to mint their own drawings as nfc is using resources a process called lamination so it's the minting of your drawing right well i suppose that that's actually a cool way to phrase it. although i'm not sure why it's glam but like okay, it's so it glam. glam look look here is how glam. glam is this it's so glam um, she's glam she glam as hell. <laughs> uh, right. So, so now we've uh, we've made art, and we. It's going to be nice to actually see this in action. How does the the go gobblers gobble the glam for the goo? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel you. I, I, I he has a, a lovely save diagram. Okay, so drafts. That's what I had over there. Mm -hmm. My beautiful robot. Right. We laminate it if, if it's good enough. Um, well, we first take a black blank page and a draft, and we smush mm -hmm. them together, which is called lamination, and then we, right. we mint our NFT. Now it's a drawn page. Hmm. If we want, we can feed it to the 
cobbler. Right. Um, oh, but okay. Um, firstly, um, goo, obviously, is, is how the goo. world goes around. So this uh, goo is um, spent to make a blank page. So you need goo in order to laminate. Right. Then you feed your drawn page to a gobbler, and if they like it, they can, um, it goes in their tummy. Um, and, then, and then they make the goo. Yeah, and then they make the goo. And then you can spend a, a amount of gobblers to make a legendary gobbler, which we'll get to later, and they produce two times the amount of goo. Um, gobblers have taken a vow to not eat their own goo. They are very civilized beings. Uh, programmatic anti-cannibalism measures. Love it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and then uh, there's something called the VRGDA price. So that's a variable rate gradual Dutch auction, uh, which we can look up over here. Um, and that will... Oh, golly. Um... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You need... Oh, dear. It looks like you might need some science there. Um, luckily, I have a science machine close by. Cool. Yes. So, um, yeah, you design the art. Your people are talented. Um, then they laminate the pages. And then, uh, yeah, so we use Goo. So Goo actually stands for Gradual Ownership Optimization. Of course it does. Naturally. Um, and Goo is not in the uh, Art Gobbler's repo. It's actually in the Transmissions 11 uh, in, in his repo. And I think the hope is that Goo will be used in other projects. <laughs> um, yeah, so Goo, uh, the, the, the more Goo a Gobbler has, the faster it generates more Goo. Mm -hmm. This means that the total Goo supply will increase faster and faster every day, going from thousands to millions and beyond. Um, yeah. So, I mean, hear me out. That kind of sounds like a Ponzi. <laughs> but like upside down, going the correct way. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, it's like a per, it, hmm, no. Not quite. Um, how, do, how does it work? You, you why, can't hoard why goo does tokens. Work? So hoarding goo tokens without owning any Gobbler NFTs is a bad strategy as everyone else will be generating goo and your share of the total goo supply will rapidly dwindle to nothing. Mm. On the other hand, if you own many Gobblers but little goo, your goo production will lag compared to other players and then your Gobblers can't gobble their favorite art. Mm. I see. So if you maintain ownership of Gobbler NFTs with a combined goo production capacity of 1% of the total and never remove your goo, um, no matter how much goo you start with, you'll eventually end up with at least 1% of the total goo supply. Um, so and now, have diagrammed that. If, that if, if the goo supply grows at a rate of math or something, won't we run out of like numbers at, eventually? If, because it sounds very exponential to me. Yes, but we are using goo over, over here when we... Um, Do we burn goo? Well, I think this burns goo. This blank, uh, spending blank pages on getting new gobblers. and I mean, spending goo on getting blank, blank pages and spending goo on getting gobblers. That probably mm. burns goo. I'm not sure what else burns goo, but we can maybe look at goo if we have time. Um, okay. In the code, but that might also be a part two, just the goo... Um, yeah, so this is um, an overview of the mechanism of goo. Um, and uh, so, yeah, goo issuance is um, the square root of that. Um, Absolutely. I love paradigm. <laughs> we will take a ridiculous concept of um, ridiculous art and make it into like a mathematical paper that's fully realistic and just innovative <laughs> it's like if a guild of wizards got into memes it's absolutely that yes um <laughs> cool and then um the auctions are done in in variable rate gdas um it, it was also used in ox monaco so you can check out a bit of an explanation on it in our ox monaco uh episode so we won't go into it too detailed but um yeah, basically what happens, let's, let's, let's go down here, is that, um, so you get a linear VRGDA, and then you also get um, square root ones, and um, log uh, 
logistic functions, which is the sigmoid function, that like S shape. Um, and what's so, the 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 main game theory thing here? It's like uh, there's something okay, to do with so getting it. Okay, so we start. Early let's say something. I want to buy an art gobbler, and you want to buy an art gobbler. Well, let's say we have two art gobblers, and we want to gobble some art. Right. I'll blindly make a bid. No, no, sorry. The price um, is set. And over time, the price uh, decreases. Where would that be? Here? Oh, not there. Um, the price decreases um, in a steady rate over time. And the first person to bid wins the art. So right. you don't want to bid that's, too soon because you pay a lot. Yeah. But if you don't bid first, you miss out. Uh, that's the main game theory. And um, yeah, I don't think we need to go into variable uh, that... PDAs much more um just that the variable rate comes into it in that um it's not a constant uh i said it was a steady rate and i was wrong um so i think it changes curves um and if you use an s curve the logistic curve um then it'll come like this and go there and then do that so um that's very variable but we'll see how how the curve changes in, in code I, I think um yeah and maybe we should actually dig into that beautiful monster. Oh, I do love me some emoticons in the commit messages. Mm, I've always wanted to be an emoticon commit person, but it, it, yeah, I, I would, I think I've never tried it. I think I would waste too much time using the perfect emoticon. I can't like... say I've ever used it in a terminal before. I think that's the critical thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose most of the things we're seeing here aren't in main. So, you know, you could be writing your messages either through a CI or something. Mm, probably. Um, cool. So we, we did look at uh, some state diagrams, but there's this extra one where um, this is the gobbler life cycle. Mm. So gobblers are only minted at 4.20 p.m. Very important fact. But who's 4.20? I'm not sure. I've been looking into it. Um, I wanted right. to follow the initial mint, and um, I was like, it's probably like behind me. Well, maybe it's my 420. I, I don't know. Um, maybe someone could tell us in chat. Cool. So you have an unminted, and then it gets unrevealed. And then, it, oh, sorry, you can mint it, but it gets revealed only at 420 p.m. Then right. you reveal it, reveal it. And then if you burn it, Gobbler, I, I think a certain amount of Gobbler, it becomes yeah, a legendary. But you can yeah, only have it wouldn't ten. really be legendary if you could just, like, burn one. It would, yeah, it if there's one for like... one, that would be bad marked. That bad it would just be old. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can buy legendary couple of auctions, um, but um, only if um, interval of goblers since last auction. So you can there's one auction per day, active auction, and if all ten legendaries have sold, auctions are complete. But otherwise, you go back to pending, and then the next day you can only do it. So you can only only if. All ten. All gets ten sold. legendaries, as in there are ten ever, or ten in the running for being sold. This I guess we'll see in the code. I, yeah. I think after eight thousand three hundred and thirty-seven are minted, do stuff. Oh, Great. see, so so this is translated linear. So they have two graphs in their VG VRGDA. And right. maybe, maybe so we could do this in a two part. Maybe today we look at the art gobbler's code, and then mm. another time we could look at the goo issuance code and the variable rate GDAs on transmissions 11s. Uh, um, gotcha. Yeah. Um, oh, I have always loved the foundry repos. I what love foundry call? so much, and I love fuzzing. Um, and it's cool that they did slither. And this has recently been. Um, audited but i did not know that one of the reports because last time i checked it was all no report or report pending but spearbit has a report out and i'm definitely gonna read that big plans tonight okay cool well, so um we'll go to src because that's where um stuff lives um should we look at goo or pages or our well i can't goes? imagine goo being terribly complicated um, yeah especially which is like a final loss in... oh my what is? Oh, I see. He brought his goo across. Um, this is an yeah, art goblet. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh, the dear. goo is created uh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Like this. Uh, 
Okay. As goo would be, you know, it's not a nasal goo. I I mean, like I hadn't had an idea in my mind until now. <laughs> um, okay, goo is an ESC twenty. It has. I've never seen it done like that. Eighteen decimals, which is wonderful. Um, looking at. I Q, legit did not know you could initialize. Yeah, you can do that. It's nice. That is amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> like you so could just cool. set some like. That makes me wonder if you can take uh, some like could, constants yeah. from an interface or something and shove them in there. You could. Wow, that's cool. Um, wow. That's very cool. And it's not Open Zeppelin's ERC twenty. It's obviously Solnet. I should um, hope not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I know how you feel. Um, yeah. Address public immutable art gobblers. So this is obviously always going to be that address. Um, Municipal pages, error unauthorized. Um, yeah, custom errors are a lot cheaper on gas, so it makes sense that they would use them. Um, so you pass in the address of art gobblers and address of pages. So this is the last thing to be deployed. Um, and you just set those. Um, so just going uh, back a bit, I've only in recent uh, contracts seen the use of immutable, but it's, it's typically in place of constants. Any idea what? But that's about immutable is cheap on gas than a constant but i mean like oh what's the difference hmm, like i i i know it's definitely cheaper because it's in a paradigm repo but like it's not like it you might can... be where it's stored i think immutable isn't stored in memory or storage but let's see it's stored in the contract um... oh maybe like a constant is a typical like slot storage yeah or it might be like getter... in, in state Let's see. Um, in both cases, the variables cannot be modified. For constant variables, the value has to be fixed at compile time. For immutable, it can be assigned at construction time. Huh. Okay. There's probably more differences, gas differences, but. Uh, oh, yeah. so mutable. So immutable can be set. A constant cannot at at. Um, at construction. Time. Yeah, correct. Um, uh, no, a constant has to be set at compile time. But uh, immutable can be set during your constructor, which we do here on line 83 and 84. Beautiful. Interesting. Um, cool. Uh, I suppose modifier immutable only. just means it's set. It's not that it's right. Anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. It just means that mm. you can set it only. Um, cool. Um, that's fine. It just means you can only mint for yourself and then transfer. Um, I do like the the approach there because you can just like shove any address in there so it's not like only owner or only yeah it's just thing only. or whatever That's but that also nice. implies that you have uh, that information prior to actually entering the runtime of the function true and that's gonna be interesting oh only art oh, no, because it's passing okay, contract stuff right um mint for gobblers address to and amount um so this is minting um amount of goo to a user um it can only be called by art gobblers, so only, and then classes in art gobblers address. Wow, mm -hmm. I really like this modifier. It's it's verbose, but also like straightforward. Mm. Great. What I don't like is nine ninety four. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, then though. burn for gobblers uh, is you burn any amount of goo from a user, and burn for pages. Yet there's no mint for pages, and we will see why. Well, that, well, I think you burn. For, wait. Um, so we have <coughs> burn for Where gobblers. Where is the actual? Um, now this is all cool, and the art is impeccable. <laughs> but I was kind of ex expecting like fancy curves and shit in here. Oh, uh, so if you go to Transmissions 11's repo, um, you can actually see the GUI issuance is. Um, oh. It's just, I want to click on his face. I thought it was a ERC20 that they're inheriting there. Yes, but it's it's issuance. Um, uh, on the right there, yeah. It's not issued, like, it's it's issued on a, on a special curve. Um, so this is Would this do. just be the uh, ERC20 and then you would use library to just plug in numbers for minting? Yes, burning. that's my interpretation of it, yeah. Right. Um, Actually, that's pretty cool because then you can just, uh, you don't have like all the business logic like wired into the ERC minting on its own. You just give it. Mm, so, like, you choose any any logic. Uh, you don't have to use Q issuance. You could use, you could plug in whatever. 
but I think his but, his uh, idea is that goo issuance um, libgoo is used for other ELC twenties because they like the idea of everyone owning a, like max one percent of the total supply. Yeah. Um, wait, I'm sorry, that's yeah. Um, cool. Back to art gobblers. Um, so let's look at the pages. Maybe uh, it's probably ELC seven twenty one A. I would assume. Oh, not. That's weird because hmm. they're batch minted. Um, we'll probably see why. Cool. Um, ooh, yeah. cute one. Oh no, he's is that a paintbrush or is that a knife? I, I'm gonna go with paintbrush because we're arting. Um, okay, so it is pages ELC seven twenty one A. Uh, sorry, no, I'm I'm wanting this A, but there's no A. Hmm. <laughs> a logistic to linear VRGDA. So I actually think we should look there first. Um, pages set. Yeah, most likely. See, um, Maybe new tools. Token. Gobbler reserve. Aha. There we go. Cool. Uh, so it has some events, transfer approval, approval for all, um, name, symbol, token URI. It really is just a 721. <laughs> I can't get over you, it. You sound so forlorn and <laughs> saddened by this information. <laughs> Do you think there's a reason in the constructor why um, I am sad about it? Why art gobblers uh, the struct is initialized last after the two strings? Like, do you think that's gas gassing? Uh, well, suppose you wouldn't need to do any casting in that case because it's already be because like I would imagine that at the same level it's all bytes, right? So then, if you address it to an address, you get specific functions attached to the or linking to that bytes that's interpreted as an address. Whereas if you just take the bytes and shove it directly into the constructor of an art gobbler type, then you skip the initial thing perhaps. Mm, yeah. But maybe. like, but like we are talking about the deployment here. Like I, I can understand like business stuff, but like trying to optimize that heavy in that of a constructor, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Mm. I think they just can't help themselves but optimize everything. Um, mm. Cool. This is just like balances and, and storage stuff. Um, they have owner of, um, owner of the page. That is that is a wild statement right there. So this like is quite crazy. So it's, yeah, because it's require that you firstly have the owner, but also... Oh, so sorry that the owner is not equal to address zero. So Inline assignment of the return variable to then qu uh, be queried in a require. Like that, yeah. That's pretty, that's that's cool. And I mean, there's literally no um, storage in there, right? So there's, well, there's no like new memory things being mm. created. There's only the stuff yeah, that's created like prior to business logic going in there. Mm. Nifty. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Cool approval storage. Um, and then um, on line 73, if operator equals address of arc gobblers return true. So it skips the approval for arc gobblers contract. Um, Interesting implementation of a guest list. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Approve, set approval for all, transfer from. The wrong from. <laughs> I wonder why they didn't just use uh, errors in this case. Literally just like strings. Mm, I really also wonder. Um, can you. Because, like. So this is a. Oh, no, it's not. A, it's a contract. Never mind. Uh, I'm not too sure. Because, I, I mean, they got errors. gas optimization there of unchecked, but like. Yeah. So I'm going to assume if it was more, whatever we are seeing is like the optimized result yeah yeah interesting i wonder um i i should do more unchecked uh stuff if i know it's not going to under overflow new goal for the week um I'll just wrap cool. the whole damn thing <laughs> <laughs> um two dot code dot length not equal to zero yeah so if there is yeah. something there 
Then um, oh, that just checks if it's a smart contract that they're sending to. Oh yes, I see. Okay, then require on the cheap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's because it's a safe uh, safe transfer from. So it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, is it, is this a smart contract? Uh, no, great, sweet. Um, you, you're aware you're gonna catch this, right? And then yeah. it does that. Okay, cool. And then um, they have the, the, they get it again, but with call data. Um, same thing. And then ESC one six five supports interface. Um, yeah, they just support 165, 721, and 721 metadata. Right. Um, okay, so their mint function is internal, and it does not check the token has not been minted already because uh, always being minted to address zero because in IDs and pages that sol are set using a monotonically increasing counts and only minted to safe addresses or messages sender cannot be zero. So that's chilled. Um, that's very paradigm of them. Yes, monotonically. <laughs> so that's a new one on me. Does I'm assuming that it's. Time? I'm assuming it implies like un uninteresting, and like <laughs> you know, standardly consistent. Oh yeah, completely uh, consistent. You're correct. Without side effects and nonsense. <laughs> Batchment, cool. Um, yeah, cool. I wonder if you can put a return in an unchecked. Because, like, surely you don't have to check anything in the idea of a return. Mm. Maybe I, it's like a weird wrapper. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you can't, but I'm going to try in a little experiment sometime and I'll let you know. Cool. And then uh, there's also the um, Gobblers ESC721, which we'll look at, I think, when we get to Art Gobblers. It'll probably implement it. Yeah. Um, Gobbler Reserve. Oh, this was a whole debate, but I. Plus plus I is gas if more gas efficient. Yeah. So can, yeah. Um, oh, cool. There. Um, yeah, it saves two opcode calls. Um, fun fact. Glorious. <laughs> okay, here's our main gobbler. Let me zoom out. Well. Well, he's so cool. He can drive. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it looks like a flying vehicle as well. Cool. So lots of Solnet going on. Obviously, uh, they're going to use a Merkle proof library, fixed point math library. I like their fixed point math library. Um, they also do that word math. You taught me about word math here. I uh, was about to be like, uh, the first time I saw the term word was when people were trying to get around the uh, die uh, like system description because it was like word and uh, they had like a three letter to four letter limit on all things that are described within the system just to keep things like as unesoteric as possible but by extension it's just distributed es es esotericism or whatever uh, but no i have no idea what that's about okay it's it's a decimal number with 18 digits of precision so it could be getting Is that what we're calling a wad now it's what we call a wad now get with glorious the love it um and i think Part of that is uh, maybe what you're saying is it originated maybe with Dai because Dai uses USDC as a reserve and that's six decimals. So maybe that's where the WAD thing was like to distinguish between. Well, this is before the day of multicollateral Dai. Like, uh, the oh, is, okay. Yeah, back when Dai was just a, a collateralized Ether thing, mm. um, when they were described, like, it was a bit of a meme at the time where the internal systems were somewhat complex at being the first um like stably functional smart contract not owned by like you know rocks in in a <laughs> like room made out of rocks sort of situation um but it was always like this wad and then like spend wad all like, it, it was very obscure but did you just say the circle has a six decimal situation no, I said USDC. That one, right? Is is six decimals? Yeah. I suppose that's probably as far as uh, the actual dollar goes. So. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that was their reasoning. I always um, wonder. It keeps me awake at night. Why did they do this? <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. On line seventy three, they have a rand provider uh, for random. Um, I'm not sure where that's going to come in. Um, 
It's we look probably at it Randau if I if I had to guess, but like random is always a questionable thing on on chain. So there's like yeah, Randau. So it could be a whole. I think Chainlink had a had a random implementation. Yeah, they have a VRF, which is verifiable random function. It's done off chain. Oh, we definitely see the actual word VRF in here. If that was the case. Yeah, um, you get two versions of VRF, and um, yeah, it's it's the only thing I use Chainlink for is their random. But there's other ways of doing it now. Hmm. Can we actually look at this random function? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Beep beep. Beep. Um, rand. Oh. oh, well done. Wait, so they, they have Chainlink V1 RAND provider and then RAND provider, which probably... Implements. That's the one they're calling from. So why did they have the Chainlink one? We'll never know. We'll see maybe later. Um, cool to events. Um, a generic asynchronous randomness provider interface. Interesting. Function, request random bytes. Bytes request so, ID. So... This is just the interface. So yeah, is always. the that they could then just like reference this one and then I don't know. just because if that's the case they could um you know create different random imp implementations or just you know use the rand provider as a wrapper and then as long as it can anything to that yeah. way, they can point. so like if chain link i mean they obviously have like a v2 of this thing so if they have a different interface. You could just make this one call the correct interface internally, and then just plug it out into the ones that Rand provider actually needs. Mm. Maybe, yeah. I think that that is the case because they're going to use it in Art Gobblers, and they're also going to use it with this somewhere. And there's a lot of sunsetting in, in, in these days, so it could be that a VO, a VRF one is like going to be sunset next they year say or something. That somewhere, maybe. And they might say that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Um, okay, cool. And then there was another thing that they imported that I wanted to check out. Or oh, um, it was in. Um, is it here? No. Is it here? Oh yeah. Um, um, I want to look at the VG VR very very gradual Dutch auctions code, but I don't know if we'll get to that in time. So let's just. Check out art cobblers, and once it gets yeah, let's go into the actual cobblers. Cool. Um, lib string for UN two five six, and also fixed point math lib for two five six. I almost uh, seeing the words goo public immutable goo uh, makes me imagine the entire contract being sung in like a sort of whimsical opera operatic voice. <laughs> goo public immutable goo. Um, have you seen that thing where this guy recently made a YouTube video reading out Tornado Cash's code? You're kidding. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Uh, the cool. internet is a chaotic uh, wasteland. I love it. <laughs> um, we have a instance of Goo, um, an instance of Pages. Okay, receives Gobblers reserved for the team. Fair enough. Community, so this will be the rest of them. Here we go. Notice the address of a randomness provider. I see. This provider will initially be a wrapper around Chainlink VR F1, but can be changed in case it is fully sunset. I wonder what they have against VR F2 that they're willing to go to this length. Um, maybe it maybe it's a bit like with the graph where V1 was like a hosted service thing, you know, like plug and play, whatever, and then like V2 might require some actual like infrastructural involvement or payment or something i have i have literally no idea i don't uh, yeah, no. i haven't dabbled in random too much it's possible um cool supply constants so th there's only one ten thousand cobblers ever right so the first two thousand were via mint list mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know how getting mint listed worked um um, I think it was you get involved in the community earlier. Like uh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was, I was doing some. I was actually going through, um, Gorily trying to figure out why one of my graphs uh, was breaking, and I found like a lot of interesting NFTs in trying to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I suspect that they got involved way earlier because some of the discords I wound up at looking at some of these other. 
NFT projects. I think it was just like the initial test community or like contributors or whatnot. Mm. Um, there, there was a, it was a pretty decent list. Okay, that's cool. Um, then it seems like you can only ever have 10 legendaries. However, if you burn one, maybe you could have nine and then go to 10, but only ever 10. But that depends. Is it a? Do you consider burning gobblers for a legendary, minting a legendary, or is it like, or is that oh, like see. sacrifice? Or is that summoning a legendary? I don't know. Let's see. I, I can't answer that yet. Um, mm -hmm. The maximum amount. So reserve supply is the gobbler split between reserves. So twenty percent of the sum of goo mintable gobblers plus reserve gobblers. Right. I don't know what that really means. <laughs> yeah. But we have max supply nice. minus mintless supply minus legendary supply over five. So. Of goo mintable gobblers plus reserve Oh, I see. Because reserve gobblers might only be able to eat. Or maybe they're reserved to become legendaries. I don't know. We'll see. Well, so like 20% of 10 is 2,000, right? So max supply is that. 10,000 mintable supply is that so like goo mintable is max supply minus that I guess mm. wait yeah. okay so we got 10,000 minus 2,000 minus 10 divided by 5 gives you oh so that's 20% of the overall t total amount is there a something. supply mm. okay oh it's okay goo mintable oh, oh you know what it is sorry I think you can look, you can mint them in two ways. So um you can do it with the Dutch auction. Right. Or with goo. But obviously uh, okay. in the beginning it was probably the RGDA because goo came later because you needed these guys. These were the initial goo makers. They're the pioneers. Right. Pioneers. <laughs> yes, the uh, um, primordial goo makers. <laughs> So max mintable is max supply minus mintless supply minus legendary supply minus reserve supply. And then this is the rest should be 80%, I assume. Cool. Sure. Uh, metadata constants, uh, provenance hash, unrevealed URI. Okay. And then uh -huh. uh, base URI. So remember, okay, because all goblers can be uh -huh. minted at any time of day, but they only get revealed um, at 420. So they'll have an unrevealed URI, which then changes to the base URI. This is the uh, revealing thing. We change the string, and that's when they get revealed. When the string is updated to the base URI, they become minted and revealed. That's peculiar. Like, does that mean that, like... Uh, uh, it's almost like giving me enum vibes, but it's not. <laughs> well, if you can predict... Uh, okay, so say we have a CID getting up... Uh, from an upload that is, um, for argument's sake, 14. Uh, and we know that, like, a gobbler of uh, 5,000 and 420, uh, 400 is getting minted. So now we add those the metadata for those two to, like, that folder, and now we can predict what the CID will be for that, right? But we haven't actually uploaded it. So then mm -hmm. we can, no, actually, like, people, because people can mint at any weird point. So, like, you, and then who's actually updating the, we'll have to see. Yeah, let's see. Uh, immutable Merkel root for the mint list. Cool. Um, so you can only, I think, claim one gobbler in the mint list. Yeah. So that's nice and fair. And then it'll be true if you've claimed it. Okay. So we start with the VRGDA and it's variable. So, we're going to have a different graph. So we have an input state, but it's not going to be our ending state. So min start uh, is the timestamp for the start of minting. And then the number of gobblers minted from goo is the number minted from goo. So this will be 20% of 10,000, maybe, because right. that's what we saw with the reserve. Um, cool standard gobbler state, um, current non-legendary ID, and then number minted for reserves. Um, so this one is... ID of the most recently minted non-legendary gobbler. Cool. Will be zero. If, yeah, obviously. Thanks. This one was very <laughs> informative. Uh, and then, yeah, this is the minted, and then they sent to the reserve. So 
you might have the IDs going up like six, seven, eight, and then nine actually goes to the reserves, and then ten is back to the general public. We'll see. Cool, legendary gobbler auction state. These are constants, not um, in yeah. municipals. Maybe because they don't want to set them in the in the constructor. Yeah, there's no set functionality for them. Yeah, they they're just always going to be this. Um, Start price is sixty nine. Is that ether, nice. or is that guai? Um, or is that just a price, and then we work it out later from the price? yes. Okay, it's that one. <laughs> Probably. You know what? It it might be. It might be goo. It might be. Oh, it could be anything. Things. Yeah. Yeah, like it could even be the amount of art a gobbler has. Uh, the gobblers sacrifice need to all have like we don't actually know mm, okay it's just 69 um okay these are the first legendary supply ids so i was wrong it's oh no i was right but uh, the legendary supplies like the, they're at the end and then the rest of the ids go in, in sequential order well i suppose that's one way to prevent collisions mm. <laughs> um And it's clever, yeah. It's just the max supply minus the legendary supply plus one. Yeah. Um, then legendary auctions begin each time a multiple of these many gobblers have been minted from goo. This is pro this, I think, is where they got the eight three three seven. It wasn't random. I thought it was. It's it's the max mintable divided by legendary supply plus one. Right. So that's based. And these are mintable for the auction. Sorry. Yeah. I kind of like that because it's like a one in 15 will be legendary kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Cool. A struct uh, with just a start price and a number sold, um, adding up to 256. So it's one nice little slot. Um, cool. And then they have an instance of that struct. Gobbler reveal state. Uh, randomness seed. Interesting. <laughs> Why? Oh, you know, the random seed it probably goes into like the um, URI and, and becomes their characters. Char uh, their... It probably maps to like some of Justin Roiland's art. And if they get a certain number, they get a hat. Or the one had a cat on its head. The other one had a pig uh, leg. Maybe that's where that artistic like randomness comes in. Yeah. It's, it's like one, one thing you could you do with having salts in your uh, metadata is that um, it can it helps with like anti counterfeit measures so like if someone had the metadata beforehand uploaded it beforehand and then you know went ahead and minted it you can now actually prove that that uploaded thing is in fact yours but like um, I don't I don't see the necessity for it here mm. I guess we'll mm. see uh, next reveal timestamp, yeah, so they only revealed it for 20 somewhere. Um, last revealed ID, to be revealed and waiting for seed, yes or no. Cool. Then they make an instance of that uh, struct. Gobbler art states. It's a mapping of UN256, which is the Gobbler ID, to a mapping of address, which is the NFT contract, which is a, which goes to a mapping of the ID, which it goes to... Uh, the number of those NFT IDs gobbled by the gobbler. So this is, um, these NFT contracts, I think, are the glaminated pages. Yeah. Yeah, get copies of art gobbled by gobbler. Yeah, so it's basically just checking um, how many of these 1155 IDs has it eaten. Mm. Was pages also, was pages in 1155? I thought it was a 721 as well. I actually have no idea. Well, because it would be, so we got an NFT contract. You look up a thing by its ID. So now you have a unique NFT. Then the number of those NFTs eaten against the ID. So like, I, th I think the last one would be redundant if it wasn't 1155. Mm. Wait, well, there are no 1155s. It's 71s. Yeah, I think they're 71s. This is bizarre. Um, cool. Uh, some events. Goo balance updated. Gobbler claimed. And then the indexed user. Um, well, address indexed user. Um, 
Goblet purchased, legendary goblin minted, reserved goblins minted, randomness fulfilled, randomness requested, rand provider upgraded. Interesting that these are here and not in the um, rand provider contract and inherited. Goblins um, revealed. Art because it's more uh, like it's more pertinently important to this one rather than because the rand the rand provider would be like you know deprecated and you know forgotten about so. Having the the state of whether it's being used by other things is probably not like relevant to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool custom errors, invalid proof. This probably has to do with the Merkel for um, mint list, maybe already claimed mint start pending, um, seed pending, reveals pending, request to request to early zero to be revealed. So, um, yeah, there's nothing to reveal. Not RAN provider. Um, reserve in balance. And then my ultimate favorite era I've ever seen, cannibalism. Glorious. Gobblers cannot eat gobblers or goo, I think. They've taken a, an oath. Amazing. <laughs> oh, um, like, it, it, it's just, this whole thing is just it, like high tier shit posting. It's great. Like, the highest tier, yeah. Like, this is all completely relevant, accurately named, and exquisitely, like, detailed. Mm, and mathematically, Great. like, apt. Yes. Um, owner mismatch, address owner. No remaining legendary gobblers, cannot burn legendary. Okay, so there are only ever 10. Insufficient okay. gobbler amounts. Legendary auction not started. The number of goblers left to auction is the return message. Price exceeded max. Not enough remaining to be revealed. The total remaining to be revealed. Unauthorized caller, address caller. Okay. And now he gets the constructor. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, Merkel root and mint start. Uh, and we set those. Again, though, not in order. I usually go like, if, if I had these two, then I set them first. Actually, no, I don't. Sometimes I group things by function. Addresses of mm. goo. No, sorry. Goo goo. Pages, pages. Um, and then the addresses of the team, community, round provider. Um, so this constructor could, could only be called by a contract that's already initialized goo and pages. Right? Um, or like a script that's already initialized hmm. the, uh, an instance of goo and pages. I don't actually know. Uh, because, like, um, it, it technically, a um, like initialized thing there, because hmm. the constructor for both of those is an address. So I don't know if you need the initialized thing to then send it, right? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I think it's just like on receive cost two kind of thing. So it's because, like, technically speaking, a uh, um, initialized contract like that is a address wrapper. You're right. So it is an address, but it's it's also a bit more. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That's good to know. Ran provider, ran provider, uh, base URI and revealed URI and provenance hash. So provenance's hash would be the, the first hash, right? Yeah. And I just realized that... I Unrevealed URI might just imply that uh, it's linking to a question mark. <laughs> it might. Um, okay, so um, yeah, now we make a gobbler's ERC721. We haven't looked at that yet. We can look at that after this. And then owned is message.sender. Um, right. Logistic VRGDA. So we must look at this, but it, so we start with the target price. So um, this is the lowest price, I think. Yeah. Then this is the price decay percent. So that's the rate at which this goes down. It was almost like a um, logger. No, not a logger. Um, Two odd safe, max mitable, and then uh, time scale. Then they set these things. Uh, we all know what that is. Start price. Okay, it's equals legendary copper start price. And then... For initial mint, we must make a day from the start of mint. So uh, that's what this is. 
Cool, that's the end of the constructor. Um, mintless claim logic. Um, I know it works because I tried to mint one and I wasn't on the mint list and it said new. No. <laughs> gotcha. Um, claim gobbler. So you put in a bytes array for the proof. Um, so that's your Merkle proof. External returns the gobbler ID. Okay, so it only, it only works if minting has started and if you haven't claimed one. Um, so this must be false. Well, I think it might be... Um, is it just one gobbler that they can mint? Yes, only one. So if has claimed is true, then revert. But otherwise, if it's false, you haven't claimed, you can get your one. Gotcha. If the user's proof is invalid, revert. Yeah. Okay. So you go Merkle proof library. I really want to look at that actually. Dot verify the proof, the Merkle root, and the catch act of the encode packed message.sender. And then if, if that doesn't return true, revert to an invalid proof. Cool, so then they mint an internal mint, which we'll see now in the minting logic. Um, this is to mint from goo, which means, um, because remember there was a mount that was reserved for the Dutch auction and then afterwards now you can mint from goo. Um, hmm. So then they current price equals gobbler price. So remember when I was like, what is 69? This must, yeah. this must be it. Um, well, I think gobbler price can wobble around a bit. Yeah, so, oh, dear God, okay. Oh, uh, so, so they it, take... it uses this VRGDA price, today's wad unsafe, time since start, num minted from goo. Today's wad unsafe might be greater than 18 decimal places. Right. Interesting, okay. So we'll have to see. So even though you're minting from goo, you're still um, following the VRGDA pricing mechanism. Interesting. Um, cool. Then we have, um, yeah, if price has exceeded the max, revert. Um, then, then they've taken a bool, use virtual balance. And, and this, um, I don't know what a virtual balance is. So whether cost is paid from the user's goo balance virtual or from the ELC20 goo balance, but maybe virtual goo balance is stuff you've built. Oh, maybe this is what you build up with your gobblers. Yeah, and so that's like likely a, Yeah, so it's like in the case of um, staking rewards that haven't been reaped, right? So like um, if you have gobblers, they're likely uh, generating um, goo if you were to check against time, but like that hasn't been transactioned against a mint function on the year 20. Mm, I guess we'll have to look. Um, unfortunately, we're actually coming up on time. So maybe we remember we we're at line 387 um, and do a part two. And then we can also look at the VRGDA code in more detail. Yeah, sounds like a vibe. We should Thanks probably so like coming. tinker around and see what else we got going on in here. Yeah, um, I would love to. Like, Thanks so much like for joining. Visually. Sure thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, hope you have a good day further. You too. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Bye.